Hey guys, this is Mindcast with your host, Kevin Seaman, where we talk about what's going on in your head. Hi, this is your host of Mindcast, Kevin Seaman. As we draw to the close of another year, it gives us an opportunity for reflection and to ask ourselves, how are we doing? Since the beginning of human history, people have been trying to measure not just their actions, but also their possessions to those of others to determine the levels of their personal wealth and performance. For our last episode of the year, episode 30, this episode's subject is about your personal wealth. So, what exactly constitutes wealth? What level of money and possession do you have to garner ownership of in order to be wealthy? And is money the only scorecard? In this Mindcast, I will clearly define what constitutes personal wealth, and I guarantee it probably will not be what you think. There are actually many types of wealth, and in this episode of our show, I will illustrate the seven fundamental forms of personal wealth. What are they? Stay with me here, and I will change your understanding of what personal wealth is and how to both obtain it and retain it. I first learned this concept of multiple forms of wealth from Tony Robbins. Your first form of wealth on my list is one of the most underestimated, undervalued, and almost invisible forms of wealth due to its intangibility. It's your inner wealth. Your mental health is your inner wealth. It is based not only on how your mind functions intellectually, but how your character is developed and how you behave and process things emotionally. It is predisposed due to your environment, your relationships, and your internal communication with yourself and external communication with others. It is the equipoise on which we balance our inward and outward lives. Maintaining that balance can lend toward a positive outlook due to the lens we perceive our world through. When we are in balance internally, our energy is less strained in relation to our positive mental health. This ease behaviorally contributes to an overall ease in our attitude and lends itself to a positive mental outlook. Positivity allows us to see the best in things around us. With a positive mental attitude, Life appears to be positive, and we transmit that positivity. It affects others in our circle of influence to the degree that they as well begin to see aspects in their life from a perspective of positivity. It's as though our outlook were contagious, and the vibes we emit are like a form of nourishment that all of us need in order to flourish. As absolutely incredible as our minds are, they're really only capable of holding one thought at any given moment. Therefore, you actually have a choice of what you want to focus on. And having a positive outlook does not just happen. It's a choice, much like saving money in a bank account. For example, when you do things for others, that generosity comes from your heart. It makes you feel helpful and good inside. It projects positivity and love. When you do things to help others, you are making a deposit in their emotional bank account, which we will talk more in depth about later in the show. Intellectually, you're able to develop your brain's ability to function more effectively through study and education. And this can help you flourish in other areas of your life. Your personal intellectual property is an invaluable resource, and it's part of your inner wealth that you and you alone possess. Your brain is one possession that cannot be replaced and is therefore one of the most valuable resources you will ever own. You could lose every worldly possession in a disaster and still rebuild and recover beyond what you once had with just the use of your brain. And because of this, it is your greatest resource. When your mental health is in balance, your life is in balance. When our lives are in balance, we are in balance. Mental health is one of the most valuable forms of personal wealth. Okay, number two in your greatest forms of wealth, your physical wealth. Having health is wealth. This form of wealth provides you with your greatest gift, life. 
It's hard to enjoy life when you're not healthy. If you want to learn the importance of health, just ask someone who's not feeling well. I know very well the value of health. I was a very sickly child. I had pretty much every childhood disease possible, and it took me decades to alter this. Much of that was done with a combination of nutrition, regular exercise, activity, and consciousness. Just thinking about the decisions I made with my health as a baseline was a major component to my improved health and vitality. As you age, physical health is something that must be accrued and maintained. It is this maintenance that is the most crucial aspect of your continuing health. A few years ago, I had to change doctors when my doctor of many years retired. I explained to my new doctor that I would require quarterly visits with checkups and blood tests. He laughed and told me, that isn't necessary. Twice a year is fine. You're in great health. I looked him straight in the eye, smiled, and said, four times a year. He laughed again and said, who's the doctor? Besides, your insurance won't pay for that. I replied, who's the doctor's client? I have fired my doctor before. I'll listen to you, but you must also listen to me, I said, as I smiled. I don't care about the money. I'll pay for it. But I do care about my health. If something shows up in my blood profile, I'll know early, and then I'll be able to address the challenge. So if it's been a while since you've had a checkup, put it on your calendar and get it done. If you don't take care of your body, where will you live? Another one of the most important aspects of maintaining your health is intake of oxygen. By maintaining a strong aerobic base, you're breathing adequate levels of oxygen. Try to breathe from your diaphragm. Diaphragmic breathing optimizes oxygen. This helps your liver and kidneys purify your blood. It nourishes your organs, and it keeps your muscular and vascular system vital. Another important aspect of health is your fuel. By ingesting a healthy daily diet, you're giving your body the nutrition it needs to thrive. Good nutrition is paramount to health and longevity, yet it's practiced by very few people. Start the new year with making better dietary choices whenever possible. A third aspect of health is water. Not all water is equal. If you drink spring water, you receive the minerals necessary for health and vitality. If you drink purified water, the minerals are removed. If you drink bottled water, look for this distinction in the type of water you choose. If you are fortunate enough to have the genetic disposition towards a healthy life, you have an inheritance beyond the wealth most will experience. But don't waste that wealth. What is not maintained will diminish. Number three. Family and relationship wealth. Family and friends are another form of wealth. One of the most profound truths of life is we become the sum of our relationships, and this shapes our health, happiness, and our future. Our quality of our relationships with others is relevant to our personal support system. Maintaining communication on a regular basis sustains our connection with family and friends. One of my prominent values is family. Whenever I have to make a decision where I choose between something and family, I take an in-depth look at how it might affect my family or my relationship with my family. Our relationships with people we care about are essential to maintain. This means they take work and prioritization. Communication is an important component of that maintenance. When we lack social interaction with friends and family, we will move toward becoming more introverted. This changes our personality and creates a feeling of loneliness and isolation, which is unhealthy to our psychological well-being. According to celebrated neuroscientist Dr. Andrew Huberman, if you don't give humans or animals enough social interaction, they actually become antisocial. Huberman goes on to say that social interactions are listed up there with essentials such as food and water. In Abraham Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, Maslow states that after the essentials of human survival are met, these needs being food, water, air, and homeostasis, 
and environmental temperature regulation, as well as basic needs for shelter, safety, and security, then the next need on this list of essential needs is social needs. Social needs include friendships, romantic attachments, and family. The premise of these needs is that once the basic human needs for survival are met, the next level of needs that drives human behavior is the need for emotional relationships. If you are without any or have few viable emotional relationships, you experience a void of one of the basic forms of wealth, the wealth of human connection. Stay with us as we continue with the last four forms of human wealth and how to recognize them and make them grow in your life. We'll be right back after a short word from our sponsors of this episode of Mindcast, Dolorex. I'd like to take a brief moment to thank our esteemed sponsor of this episode of Mindcast, Dolorex. This is a product that works, guys. I've tried a lot of pain management products over the years. I have personally used Dolorex CBD cream and the roll-on. And as a coach and a very physical athlete, I've had outstanding results with these topical creams. I've also given them to my staff and clients who have had equally outstanding results. In addition, I've also had equally great results with the powdered CBD drink especially as a compound factor for injury and related pain. And in addition to pain management, it's given me a feeling of well-being, calm, and relaxation. It's helped me fall asleep more quickly, and I wake refreshed and ready for the next day. Dolorex Proprietary Topical Pain Management Cream combines scientifically proven analgesic ingredients infused with an advanced proprietary nano CBD hemp oil that penetrates deeply and quickly into the skin to manage pain at the source. The fine folks at Dolorex back their quality products with a 100% money-back guarantee within 30 days of delivery. That's D-O-U-L-E-U-R-X. Look for the green and white label. Use the product code MINDCAST to receive a 20% discount on your order. Check them out at dolorex.com. All right, we're back. Okay, on to number four, emotional wealth. Emotional wealth is connected and nourished in part by our relationships, but not entirely. Other areas of life that build our emotional wealth are giving and receiving care for ourselves and others or what is referred to as esteem needs. This occurs when we gain approval, appreciation, and respect from others, and we experience a feeling of personal worth. It can also come from giving these qualities to others. This would be, as I had previously said, a deposit in their emotional bank account. We also feel emotional satisfaction when we visit new places or meet new exciting people. We feel excitement when we are able to take a challenge or deliver more than expected of us. We may gain a feeling of emotional satisfaction as well when we experience adventure or feel confidence in our abilities. Our connection to these feelings is the chemical release of dopamine, and that is triggered by these experiences. Emotional wealth is also connected to our inner wealth as our emotional content is both supported by and supports our level of mental health. The level of our emotional wealth is congruent with our purpose for living, our passion for life, and our passion for what we love in our lives is the fuel for building our emotional flame. And it is that flame that burns deep inside all of us and gives us purpose. Okay, on to number five on my list time wealth. Time is the most valuable of all wealth you will ever possess. Not only priceless, it is also irreplaceable. It cannot be bartered for, saved up, recouped, or reused. It is invaluable in that once it is passed, it can no longer be used. Time is wasted by so many, yet it is the most valuable form of wealth they will ever possess. Time appears to pass quickly when we are with someone we love, doing things we enjoy. 
but passes so slowly while we're waiting for that very segment of time to begin. It passes slowly for us when we are young, but that exact time period passes in the blink of an eye as our parents watch us grow. We can't own it, yet we sell it. We can't reuse it, yet we will waste it. Time is both elusive and perishable, and our use of it is temporary. Be sure to utilize and invest your wealth of time wisely. It is your greatest asset. Number six, financial wealth. Money is not the most important thing in life, but it is one of the most important things. And because of that, it is needed in some capacity to survive in a society. Abundant financial wealth allows a person to move away from the necessity of the day-to-day -day stress of baseline survival. Financial wealth can definitely improve your quality of life if utilized appropriately. When you have the financial capability to provide beyond the basic needs for yourself and your family, it shifts your focus to what else can I do? I think a powerful application of this is the more I have, the more I can give. So I will earn more to give more to others that have less. Remember, you can't take it with you. And as the old joke goes, how much did he leave when he died? All of it. Our final form of wealth, number seven, is impact wealth. Giving to others is a satisfying and spiritually nurturing act, especially when you see that they are in need or in desperation. I think some powerful questions to ask ourselves are, what is our mission in life? What is the impact that we can make on our environment? Is there something that we can do to improve the lives of people who need our support and help? Just how do we impact others? Think about it. People who have an impact in their environment find ways to use their impact wealth. Paul Newman started a company called Newman's Own in 1982 with the premise, let's give it all away. In 2005, Paul established Newman's Own Foundation to ensure that the company's philanthropic outreach would continue. As a result, Newman's own business model has remained the same over the years, with Paul declaring that 100% of the profits would go to charity. Today, the mission continues, and more than $570 million has been donated to thousands of organizations, helping millions of people around the world. The Mother Teresa Foundation, founded originally by Mother Teresa in 1950, is a philanthropic missionary widely known for its caring of the sick and poor inhabitants of Kolkata in eastern India and elsewhere. It is one of the most famous charities in the world. I love this quote that sums up her approach to helping others. Not all of us can do great things but we can do small things with great love. The famous self-help and leadership coach, Tony Robbins, and the Robbins Foundation is best known for his work with hunger. Tony has, as a philanthropist, through his partnership with Feeding America, provided over 525 million meals in the last five years to those in need. He is on track to provide 1 billion meals over the next five years. Although this is not the only work that Tony Robbins has done to help others by any stretch of the imagination, it shows the power that an individual has if they have a vision. These individuals have paid forward to impact others in a life-altering way and have literally helped hundreds of millions collectively. As we conclude this episode of MindCast, take a moment to reflect on how wealthy you really are when you recognize your inner wealth and your physical wealth provides you with life. Show gratitude when you have a caring family or caring friends. When you're healthy or when you're able to help others, you are wealthy. If you enjoyed this episode of MindCast, be sure to listen to my other episodes. Subscribe 
and share with your friends and family. Mindcast is supported by your listenership and in part by our friends at Dolorex, our sponsors of this episode of Mindcast. Thank you. Until next time, this is Kevin Seaman, and this is Mindcast.